Yo, yo, yo. What's going on, everybody? Seed resetting terror territory. Seven hours. Mar, how you doing? <clears throat> We're in the seed resetting hell. Yo, three months. What's going on, Mike? How you doing? DC Metro for a wedding. Noise. Thank you for the good luck. I hope the wedding is fun. Well, it's just like when I get like a tough RNG, especially a new type of RNG, like I've never done. I've never done this type of RNG before. Um, I always am addicted to it. I always enjoy it. This is just how I am as a human being. You know what I mean? And so I wanted to do four different things this week, but instead we're doing this twice because I'm just, I like doing it. Yeah, there was also some errors in the program yesterday as well. So the reason we overshot was because the uh, advances were calculated incorrectly. Um, and the the advances uh, were moving faster than thought, which is actually good news for us because it means less wait time. Uh, it means less wait time. I'm addicted to doing this RNG in it. I will never be addicted to literally playing the game. The single player campaign of this game is like truly one of the least fun times. Some of the least fun I ever have playing Pokemon.
to uh, do some do some math real quick. How much is this? I think I went into the... Excuse me. We'll skip. We'll go to a different song. Oh, this is the final song in the playlist. It's not gonna work, is it? If I go next, it's gonna go to some random song. Annoyingly. to do clear. Twenty five hours. No, thank you. Sixty-two hours. No, thank you. Bonjour.
Uh, no, it's the same in Japanese and English. This is just the game that I have that's near the end of the game with Absol. That's pretty much it. My other Coliseum games are either in the post game or at the very first part of the game. hours we will get the uh you always need to know your trainer id and secret id when doing a hunt uh in coliseum Unless you're not going, you well, I'll say you only need to know your trainer ID and secret ID if you're trying to get a shiny. To be clear, if you're not going for a shiny. You, you don't need to know what it is. And in most games, that's true, but it's not true in all games. So I'm not gonna say always. But like, like in Sword and Shield, you don't need your trainer ID for. You don't need a. Uh... isn't working huh oh the camera just stopped that's weird hmm. yeah like i think you don't need your uh trainer id in bdsp either unless it's for eggs if i recall correctly sword and shield is similar where you need it for raids but you don't need it for overworld rng um Not all IDs can lead to good. You guys wanted to hunt shinies? Well, if you're just doing a shiny hunt, it doesn't matter. You don't need to know anything. If you're doing an RNG manip, it's different. If you're doing an RNG manip, it's not that hard, depending on which target you pick is basically the main thing. So bronze, how you doing? Hopefully we can get a good run going soon. 30. And I have a video for us to watch with explicit permission from the permission from the creator. So that's that'll be exciting when we get a we get a chance to watch a cool video.
12 hours. No, thank you. I don't really know the music from Stadium 1 and 2. The only, like, Stadium-like music... What did I just click? The only Stadium-like music that I even know very well is, um... Is Pokemon Battle Revolutions OST. Where they have something like... Stuff like this, but I really like the one that's uh, is it neon? No, it's Sunny Park. Whoa, this one kind of rips actually. Hold on, this game has a really good soundtrack, I think, compared to this game's, which is, I think, horrible. Oh, whoops. <laughs> this is a good one. This game is... Uh, uh, PBR is not very good, though. I'll say that much. Can we see your co-pilot screen? It has no useful information on it currently. It's... You'll see my co-pilot screen when it's time to do the actual minute. But this information here is from co-pilot. It's the only relevant information to you all. Uh, Sunny Park is my favorite Coliseum song, I believe. Or my favorite... Whatever they're called. Ah, oh, 40 minutes! All right. We're on a run. It's gonna be bathroom time into setup, into like getting the battle going. So here we go. Excited. It's time. My hair goes back when it's a run time so I don't get distracted. All right, here we go. We're also gonna stop this. You guys are gonna get this. I am going to, we're gonna have to do a lot here. We're gonna stop input, stop recording. And now you can see my uh, co-pilot. Oh, co-pilot is not gonna be there because it's, uh, there we go. Boink. Hmm. What's up, Dark Void? How you doing? All right, so.
This is our current seed. So, we're gonna do find with a specified range. No, we don't need to do that. We'll do that later. We're just doing blink right now. Now we know the advances from the battle are gonna be like 200,000. 500, 1, 2, 3. My blink Pokemon in this moment is Espeon. So, here we go. Oh, I need to, uh, you guys can hear the game audio, right? Chat. Now I can't see chat. So what we're going to be doing now The battle goes I'm leading with Remoraid I'm leading with Remoraid and whoever it's called I Switch with Remoraid, attack with Espeon. Should be about 200,000 advances. And then I call with Burr, attack again with Espeon, leave P2 as the last bastion for the uh, mill tank trainer. to be as consistent as possible. Rumor is the second. This method is only one one thirtieth of a second input. Uh, what do you mean? What this is a Absol using evolution blink, where I cause a Pokemon to blink during the evolution of it. I didn't KO. I KO'd the Porygon. It shouldn't matter that much. I'm still going to be finishing the battle with Psychic. Now we're going to identify where we are in the seed by using the co-pilot tool. So we're going to start inputs here. Hold on, I, I should have a few things to set up as well, actually. So this was my initial seed. Oops. We're, we're going to actually paste my target seed into here. Seed distance, target seed, shadow Pokemon summary. That's what we're gonna be doing. Then we go into blink, and we're gonna find my blink. Oh, and we should do uh, show blinks. Let's set this to three thousand for now. It should be all right. Here we go. K 
calculate. I found nothing because I think I fucked up very badly with my inputs. We found it, 209,000, perfect. This is our current seed, put that into there. Uh, we'll do shell blinks, do 3,000, hit calculate, hit open timer. I have to switch back to my layouts to get to the timer. All right, we'll go back. The other thing, you guys can't see what I'm doing, but I'm basically switching my monitor and stuff. This is a false seed. False seed. Find a seed. So we're going to try and find seed again. That was the correct... Oh, no. Uh, hold on. Give me a moment. Try again. So this is gonna, we're gonna try again. See it gave me. Open the timer. Should be tracking in the background the whole time, should it not? We're there. All right, looks like we're in sync. Have you seen Drew Mish's video about your events? Nope, but we're gonna watch that today uh, together, sh in very shortly, basically. Like the whole PDA UI? Yes, thank you, I made it myself. So once this timer runs out, we will know our seed. And we want to leave about 60, 650,000 advances left. I'll up it to 700,000 just to be safe. Kiss of death, how are you? All right, so we should be on this seed. So, wait time, we're gonna leave 700,000. Advances, my target seed. Wait to do this many advances. So we have to set a timer for this long. So let's open a flow timer. So flow timer is going, so we're waiting here. 
Now, what we want to do is set this to our currency and blink. I'm going to put that there, and then we're going to know that we're advancing this many. So we can go like from like this to this. We can do like four zero here. Just check if we overshoot. And now we're waiting. So at this point, let's watch the Droomish video. I will turn off the game audio. Oh. So let's watch this video together. It should be fun while we wait. Uh, let me get flow timer open as well. Boink. There's flow timer. All right. So we're going to do... Uh, let's do oops I wonder if we could just do no because this is probably like a two here, let me I have an idea duplicate watch IT vid Let's get a tab open. Give me a moment. Add window capture. Perfect. So this is Drew Mish's page. Drew Mish, I gave him my DLC cards and he made a video on them. Pokemon Ruby. So let's, uh, I'm not gonna full screen it, but. Hold on, let me figure out. Oh, I could probably do. Hold on. There's a way to do like the pop out thing. I don't know how to. Oh, that doesn't leave the. Sapphire and Emerald. Okay, I thought that would uh, leave, make it leave. It's fine. I don't do this, so. Well, no, let's just do the default view then. Let's get like this. This. I'll get Drew Mission there. Make sure you guys know who I'm watching. Okay, so you guys know who I'm watching. I'm watching Drewmish. This is a Drewmish video. Drewmish made it about me. We are waiting on this timer. Uh, Alright, so let's see what Drewmish had to say about moi. So this is about my DLC. This is about my DLC. Let me get chat over here. Are nothing short of Pokemon Odysseys. Oh, Add Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Games that are nothing short of Pokemon. I have no idea what he says, by the way. Okay, he asked me some questions, but that's all I know. On Odysseys. Absolutely classic entries in the series that can easily be viewed as perfect in so many ways. Especially with Emerald as that deluxe version of the generation. There seems to be near universal agreement from the community that this is one of the greats. Right up there with Platinum, Heart Gold, and Soul Silver. There's an extremely complete feeling like to it, as the game effects. is absolutely packed with content and activities. But that still hasn't stopped people from trying to make it all the greater. There's plenty that you could lovingly view as missing from these games, especially with a distant post-release point of view. There's some missing legendaries in their stories, True. unfulfilled or no longer possible events, True. and certain minor oddities like the White Rock. Or What's the going on with that? The rocket launches with seemingly untapped potential. Whoa. Community members have gone to great lengths to hone in on these aspects and make the game that they already love so much even more incredible. 
leading to the creation of plenty of ROM hacks and patches with the express purpose of making emerald and ruby and sapphire rise even higher. And that love for the game, really. So the thing is, yeah, the funny part is, the main thing I don't like about ROM hacks is, or why I don't play them as much, is because one of the thing I enjoy the most in Pokemon is that like I can get a game, I can get Pokemon, that I'm playing Kahlo right now, and I could send this Absol up to the latest iteration of the game. And so, like, that's why I was never too into the ROM hack scene. I would play some of the standalone story games, like Flora Sky and stuff, but that's why I never got too into, like, the through. improvement ROM hacks. Try as we might, the game... Like, Crystal Plus Plus or something like that, you know? The game itself, at its core, was and is a done deal. They were released at a time where there was generally no room for updates or bonus content, so that core game is locked into history. We can only create homages to these wonderful cartridges. At least, that's what I thought. Because as you might have gathered from the title of this video, there's something new on the scene that has caught my eye. Working DLC has been created, as authentically as it possibly could be, for the Gen 3 Game Boy Advance titles. That is completely compatible with original I feel very narcissistic watching this. He's already being too nice to me. Uh... Garden variety cartridges. Fulfilling some of that missed potential, telling new stories, and creating new experiences all alongside the original hardware. The incredible developer of this DLC, I'm a Blissey. It's me. Oh. Has created something this DLC. Oh my lord. I'm a Blissey. The insane. I got a Dark Souls boss intro. You guys see this? Has created something here I consider so monumental and incredibly important. What was I doing here? Hold on. What was this one? This is recent object event. Oh, this is when I was learning. This is when I was learning how to spawn object events. Not only for Gen 3 and the Pokemon community, but perhaps even for video games and their preservation as a whole. And it's this significance that I want to discuss today. But let's first do a brief overview of what we're looking at here so we're all on the same page. This DLC was created very purposefully to feel like the mystery gifts and legendary storylines of the original time period, such as visiting Latios or Latios on the legendary Southern Island, or this hunting video down is 20 the 20 minutes. Surely he doesn't only talk about me. I was gonna say elemental birds in fire red and leaf green. With the actual content Wait, that this you does look like it's me until the very end. Holy mo there's no way. You and I can play at home being more of those special encounters with legendaries or mythicals that for whatever reason didn't make the base cut of the games. And in some special cases, there's even been additional puzzles and stories attached to the encounters. <sighs> so proud of those. You can grab everything you need right now over on Blissey's page. But unbelievably, there's no hacking required here, at least for end users like you and me. Because despite the long list of custom events, Pokemon, and stories, Blissey went to extreme lengths to emphasize authenticity in every step of the process. And so the events are just as quote unquote real as any other you'd experience during the original time frame. The Pokemon pass legality checks all the way up to home. There's no need for save editing or injecting in any form. And it all runs on original physical hardware. True. And all of that is possible because of the Nintendo e-reader. An oft-forgotten GBA accessory. I love the Nintendo e-reader so much. The express purpose of adding extra content to games by using its scannable cards in lieu of online or wide Glorious 240p footage because no one gives a shit about this device. Downloads. You run the e-reader on one Game Boy, scan a compatible code card, yes. and then send the bonus content oh, to the true. actual game running on a second Game Boy. Yeah, it's a bit of a bulky process. Mm -hmm, true. And now, years and years later, Blissey has amazingly deconstructed, reverse engineered, and I dare say even improved that original functionality through the advent of their own. Dude, do you guys know how hard it was to make this shit look real? This took forever. I am such a bad artist. <laughs> and I, it took it was so it took me so long to get this card to look like this. I've never even talked about it in the videos that much. Oh, custom code cards. You scan the card for Jirachi, for example, and a special encounter at the Moss Deep White Rock gets sent to your cartridge with no issue. That's the long and short of the experience for the general player or spectator. If you're curious about all the juicy technical details on how they were coded and designed, you should definitely check out the videos Blissey themselves did on the Ooh, entire project. I love project. this shot. This is like a good... 
I, I just, I appreciate this as like an edit, like as a way to like explain a thing in the, I just like this Links edit. Links are in the description about me. and on screen. But I'm more of a fledgling coder myself. You know, hello world and all that. So those finer details are all a bit over my head. But that's just fine, because this is more of a focused analysis and or review type of thing. The main focus I'm concerned with here, and ultimately amazed at, is that it works, it all checks out, and most importantly, it's fun. More than fun, even. Magical might be a better word. <laughs> this DLC isn't just this a is logistical one of my... port and this is one of my favorite experiences was watching Drewmish live try and solve these puzzles. I've I had a lot of people play test these for me, but I didn't have I, I never got to see anyone play test it. Like I would give people the events to play test and be like, are these puzzles too confusing? Like, what do you guys think of it? And then like they would get they would just give me answers, but I never got to see anyone react to them. I saw Drewmish and I saw Hayden. This DLC isn't just a logistical port and preservation of Gen 3 era mystery gifts and distributions. It goes above and beyond that bar. It captures the magic and mystery we experienced playing these games for the first time with new entries in their legends and lore. The mystique of uncovering the Regis for the first time. The thrill of summoning Deoxys on Birth Island. Those feelings are here, captured completely. And that's because the emphasis isn't just on software and hardware authenticity, experience authenticity was emphasized as well. These are new stories thematically indistinguishable from those of old. And I was having a ratatouille <laughs> food critically indistinguishable from those uh, of old. Dude, that's so funny. I don't, this is a good bit. I don't know what it is, but I appreciate it a lot. Uh, that made me laugh. And I was having a Ratatouille food critic moment the entire time I was playing them. It took me back to 10 years old, Game Boy Advance in my hand. Okay, but really, really, really this time, how is all of that even possible? Because I'm telling a pretty fantastical tall tale here. What makes this so different from Ooh. the rest? I love this shit. I love these edits. I do these at the start of my e-reader videos where I show me putting shit into my real hardware. I love the switch Why sound effects. Why am I saying it feels so real in the real way? Well, as most stories go, I think it would be best to start at the beginning. And here that means with the application and incredible hardware of the e-reader device. Because while Gen 3 was finished, there was that outside but still official way to receive some new data. True. The third generation of games was uniquely equipped to interface with the e-reader and receive additional, albeit very limited, post-release content. Pokemon would release cards with special barcodes printed on them, and when scanned with the e-reader and then linked to a Pokemon game, you could get some bonus items and trainer battles that served to extend the experience of the games. The cards functioned like a very basic, but also physically linked DLC for the generation. A very clever idea for the technical limitations of the advance, but unfortunately one that wasn't too popular in the US. And support for the device was ultimately very limited. The bonuses in mainline games were only even offered for Ruby and Sapphire outside of Japan. And these bonuses are extremely supplementary. I feel like even calling them that is generous. There are a handful of new and pretty unique berries that ended up being ruby and sapphire. Is this how the berries show up in the game? That looks bad. Sapphire exclusive because of how this card support works. And then some battle tower type trainers you can fight in a special area of mm -hmm. Moss Deep City. Behind the boxes in that one house. Now don't get me wrong, these are definitely cool and good things. But I'm a little critical of them because each trainer and berry comes from an individual card. There isn't something like a berry expansion or trainer package you can do all at once. Each card corresponds to oh. a single item or matchup, nice sleeve. and it's just a tiny no bit underwhelming as standalone bonus content. Which is too bad because simply using the device was and continues to be a purely fun experience. Yes! Physically swiping these lovely trading cards adorned with sprite work and set design. The fanfare of the e-reader's menus Dude, and music why is this shit ripped? an event. The soft tune that plays as the device tells you to use and music as you accept an event. The I don't know why that song rips that so hard. As the device tells you to go check out the boons of your swipe. There's a level of follow through here across the experience that feels very yep. golden age Nintendo. Ooh. It's not just something you do to get stuff. It's I an agree. experience that was curated from beginning to end. And for that reason, I have to offer some give on my earlier criticism. 
because the unique method of delivery for this experience brings the downside of file size limits. A card's horizontal dot code, as they were called, could store 1.8 kilobytes. Oh, dude, he asked me this yesterday. I did not realize he was releasing this video to today because he was asking me shit yesterday. He was like, do you have the exact sizes on this stuff? ...of data. And the long vertical code could store 2.8. And yeah, that's not a ton of space. So individual downloads makes a lot of sense. And then that could be paired with what the charming trading card angle as the majority of the cards were bought in packs very similar to regular Pokemon cards. Plus your only limit on swiping is the number of cards that you possess. So sure, you're just gonna be in for a lot of swiping. And I mean a lot of swiping. Sometimes the scanner doesn't catch them right the first, second, third, or 15th time. This is really a big problem. Unless you're extremely gentle and deliberate with your swipe. But those ideas of the item or trainer package I floated earlier are possible as long as you as the player is serious about collecting the cards. Usual applications aside, however, there is one card in particular that powerfully stands above the rest and does offer that wow factor the any player Eon would hope ticket. for in their DLC. Tucked away in remote waters of the Hoenn region, Southern Island awaits trainers brave enough to make the ocean voyage. Those lucky enough to have scanned the Eon Ticket e-reader card will be able to visit this island home of the legendaries Latios and Latios for an exclusive chance at catching the member of the pair that doesn't natively appear in their game. So Latios and Ruby, and Latios and Sapphire, and whichever you didn't choose on the TV in Emerald. Once you have scanned the e-reader card, or your ticket in this case, because- This is a fun fact, this is a real typo the Eon ticket has. This is a, just a typo in the Eon ticket. They made a typo on the actual official card they fucking printed. Even the packaging is thematic. You receive the actual item in game from your dad at the Petalburg gym, and then you'll be sent on a charming mini story where you team up with a sailor at Lily Cove to visit the mysterious island, which quickly culminates in the encounter with a legendary. Not to mention the laddie twin that you catch will be holding the soul dew, a personal held item for the pair that is seriously good and an exclusive benefit to this event. And all things considered, this is simply perfection. This is that beauty I enjoy being surrounded by oh so much. The Eon Ticket event isn't too over the top or overwhelming. I agree, but it it's certainly very special. isn't too little either. And they committed to the bit the entire way through. I think there's good and legitimate reason players yearn for this style of event so much in an age where the concept seems all but forgotten by Pokemon itself. They were extremely well designed and offered an extremely positive experience for the general player base. They don't offer anything over the top in terms of story. It's usually just a short trip like this one to a special location that has a unique encounter. And certainly the end goal is that Pokemon. You go to Southern Island to get Latios, just like you go to New Moon Island to get Darkrai. That's the raw cause and effect if you remove all the emotion from the equation. And that's exactly what happened with Pokemon like Volcanion and Zerora that were distributed straight to players. No event story in game. Still cool, but that emotion and attachment gets stripped away when you remove these little journeys. Yeah. And it's arguably the most important part. It's the experience. Let's follow that experience using the Eon ticket here as an example. Your dad receives a strange letter addressed to you with an unfamiliar boat ticket inside. Even though he's a big time gym leader in Hoenn, he's never seen anything like this before. So he recommends you get it checked out in Lily Cove City, a poor town with a ferry service. The sailors there will probably have a better idea about what's going on. The crazy part is, it's like you can't tell from the end user experience, but the whole of the Eon ticket is done when the dad gives you the ticket. By the time he has given you the ticket, there's no more special code. It just sets a flag and then the rest of it's in ROM. So like the stuff that I ended up doing is so much further beyond what this is but it doesn't necessarily feel any different because of the way that it was programmed if that makes sense so you take the like ticket the end to user the can't tell and try to present it that, to the attendant you know what i mean but you're interrupted by a gruff and rugged sailor who likes saying stuff like boy matey so you know he's serious about sailing he knows of the location on the ticket but it's still largely unclear what lies in wait on the island oi matey etc <laughs> It's a thrilling that and exciting mystery for him, so he's willing to take a trip with you. Anchors away.
After the boat ride and actually on the island, you find a winding, grassy path running through a dense ocean of trees. Other than a bare bones platform for the boat to dock at and some simple stairs up the path, the island appears to be completely untouched by humans. The music is the same theme that plays at the abandoned ship, and it's fitting for another location that seems to have been forgotten by time, albeit maybe for a different reason. There's almost a mystical, divine quality to the place because of these things, like you might be the first person who's walked this path in a very long time. At the end of the way, before an entrance to an enclosure within the forest, you find a sign that reads, What does this mean? Who put it here? Why is it on this island? There's simple but soul-searching intrigue contained in this signpost. It's a somber but also hopeful sentiment. Even though my memories become more distant with time, I'd like to think that they'll always be a part of me, at least in some way. It's got me really thinking about my life. So, thanks, random signpost. Beyond the sign, you head inside the forest enclosure and find an unusual stone surrounded by a shallow puddle of water. The stone has an otherworldly appearance. What is the it stone? It looks like a moon rock or something from another planet entirely. It commands interest to the center of the area. And upon interacting with it, the legendary dragon respected to your version descends from the skies and challenges you to a battle. A legendary encounter in a legendary place. And if you happen to check the rock again afterwards, you're greeted with another strain saying, all dreams are but another reality. Never forget. There's little to no concrete story here, but the short journey from swiping your real life ticket to having the encounter is an evocative experience. They employ subtle storytelling that creates intrigue and inspires awe, and that's just the one. Events like these were littered across the games, both in the main story and event distributions. The Regis, It looks like an egg Deoxys, to me too. Darkrai, Shaman, Giratina and Diamond and Pearl, just to name a few. But for me, there's an even more perfect delivery here with the Eon ticket because the packaging is perfect too. Not only did I get to have this special adventure on this special island, mm. but I physically own the ticket that got me on the boat. This is unprecedented immersion. There's an extreme dedication to the bit here. And so I think in some ways it is firmly the best event Pokemon ever held. I can confidently describe the gameplay and hardware that goes into it as an actual event. It really lives up to that word. And the only downside is that the Eon ticket was one of a kind in this way. It was that golden goose of the e-reader. I can only dream really like of there being gameplay. more events like it, fantasizing about those possibilities. What would this type of event have looked like for a Pokemon like Celebi? Or Raikou? Or Jirachi? What sort of music will we have heard? These are at the core of that missing potential. Those lost fragments I, I wish we all could have seen. But I find myself so happy now because I don't have to wonder anymore. With Blitzy's DLC pack, we've got cards and stories for all of those Pokemon. And more. Every legendary and mythical not covered in Gen 3's main stories has a card and event to go with it. And even some bonus ones on top. All compatible with Ruby and Sapphire and even some extended support for Emerald. Every card scans indistinguishably from the real thing and the games read them as such. The events were painstakingly coded and engineered to dispense the Pokemon identically to the way they did in their original events, except now they're all encounters instead of gifts. Even better. This like the was Jirachi the most card. unhinged thing that I did, was making these not gifts. Making these encounters was so much extra work. <laughs> For example, has you fighting a carbon copy of the Pokemon channel Jirachi, and it reads to the games as completely legal. It doesn't set off any flags. Now, of course, this doesn't make it the real thing. There's a big jump between legal and legitimacy, and we all collect and play for different reasons. So it's up to the individual in a lot of ways what all of this means to them, but they are all 100% legal by that technical definition and as such can make a successful pass up to Pokemon Home. That's and so I easy. have to appreciate that excruciating level of attention to detail I said it a little earlier, but the reason I do that is because that's the main thing that's appealing to me about the games is the continuity of them. And like the, like the idea like that I don't wanna give people 
a thing to get in the game, even if the thing is fun, even if my legendary, like if my legendary beasts weren't legal, or if my Celebi or Jirachi, if they weren't legal, I think they would still be cool. But one of the reasons I ended up having to go through the legality process was because Deoxys and Mew won't listen to you in Emerald if you don't have that obedience flag set. They will listen to you in Ruby and Sapphire, actually. But they won't listen to you in Emerald. They won't listen to you in Fire and Leaf Green if that flag is not set, right? And so because of that, I had to go... Like, I don't want to give someone a thing and then you can't use it in the other Pokemon games. Like, half the fun, even if you're playing by yourself of these games, is, like, trading and stuff to other... to other people and games and up and, you know what I mean? And stuff like that. And so, like, well, you know, I, if I have to do that for Deoxys and Mew, I'm gonna have... I'm gonna do it for everyone because I've already got the infrastructure to do it, right? ...that went into making this as authentic as physically possible so much later after the fact. And the overall delivery on those ideas, it's perfect. Perfect. Everything. <laughs> down to the last minute detail. Every card is double-sided and He's filled with loving detail. Being too nice again. The front side features a silhouette of the event Pokemon next to the game logo all in front of the event's location. And the back side shows a stylized Pokédex entry with a small blurb explaining the event story. The silhouetted side offers a subtle intrigue alongside a sleek, sort of classic Pokémon card aesthetic. While the Pokédex entry draws on the existing lore of each Pokémon and extends it into a brief story for the Hoenn region that you can go experience right this very second. Don't just take my word for it either. Go play them right now. <laughs> Everything is freely available to download, print, and set up on Blissey's page. But if you don't have the means to set it all up physically, because yeah, that's a lot, they've got a guide to run the events completely digitally as well. No e-reader or cards required. They even set up the means to access the defunct e-reader support on Emerald despite it normally not being accessible outside of Japan. The package just wouldn't be complete without all these accessibility measures too. No expense was spared in making sure the greatest number of people could experience this masterpiece. And so assuming you either went, I did work very hard on that. went and played them for yourself, or you just want to keep hearing my lovely voice on the subject, <laughs> thanks so much. That's funny. Let's talk about that experience. That being the thing you actually see and play with at the end of the day. A big part of the design here was to avoid Yo, shout out to receiving or encountering the Pokemon in the he events made that card. at the Pokemon Center from the Mystery Gift Man. And I really appreciate this subtle focus. There is a certain thrill in interacting with the Mystery Gift Man, but the overall process is definitely lacking when he just hands you a Pokemon. The Pokemon itself is generally pretty exciting, unless it's this one, but the experience itself is lazy at best. I like heading out for a battle. Something like Darkrai or Shaman, or even better, a mini story like Zoroark and the Shiny Beasts in Black and White One. And to my absolute delight, here with the cards, every Pokemon oh, is an. This is something I like. I'll never forget, is that I put so much painstaking effort into making sure that every Pokemon had a cry that was legitimately available, and like I tried to make like super ancient, like and Red Orb is capitalized. Like I tried to make sure all the dialogue that I used was like that in my first round of events. And someone was like, Pokemon is always capitalized, except for the E. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, they're totally right. Like that's the style guide for Gen 3 and I failed on it. Out in the overworld with locations based around lore to do with that respective Pokemon. Some more thematic than others. And it makes sense because there's not a perfect place for every one of these legends in the Hoenn region. Like Mew, for example, is fought in the is for every one of these legends in the Hoenn region. Like Mew, oh, for example, is fought in the tall grass on Route 120. There's no story reason for Mew to be here, but the route itself is reminiscent of the island Mew is caught on in its native event, so it still makes reason. enough sense. And in the end, it's ultimately super well done, as the object Mew is mapped onto is one of the invisible Kecleons. And one of Mew's most noteworthy abilities in media and story surrounding it is to turn invisible, so I think it still offers on that experience, even with it being sort of a what-if scenario. Now the only snag with this, and a- Celebi came out at the same time as the, uh, all of the events have Pokemon in lowercase, the first event set. 
few of the cards is that it can be a little difficult to know where to go on the route and what to interact with, as the events are all mapped onto existing objects with their own functions, like Mew on the Kecleon tile, or Entei on this boulder, for instance. This mapping encounters onto objects is just a symptom of the way the events had to be created though, it's and true. they couldn't exist otherwise, but yeah. this tiny weakness is almost made into a strength through the cards themselves. Because the picture of the location on the card shows you exactly where you need to go. I did do that on purpose. And the big problem, I mean, this is an advantage for the cards. Like if you have them physically, I made them that way to show you, like even in the Raikou. Cards themselves. Wait. Because the picture of the. Even in Raikou, I chose this spot of Route 119 because that's where he is. He's right here. <laughs> this is where he's at. This is where Raikou's at. So I, that's why I picked this specific uh, spot, right? Um, and so I did that with all the cards. So you do get an extra benefit if you're using the cards because most people aren't going to just look at the card pictures if they're downloading them. Location on the card shows you exactly where you need to go. They're cleverly focused on the event's location. Like Meteor Falls is a pretty big place, but I know that I need to get to this exact location before I start interacting with there things. You go. Makes it a lot easier. If you're doing it without looking at the cards or Blissey's videos, it's just a little extra bit to be aware of. My absolute favorite out of the batch has to be Jirachi in the White Rock, because this one is total wish fulfillment for me. I was <laughs> I one of those shit. kids on one of those playgrounds that was absolutely convinced Jirachi was somehow tied to this rock. I think that makes sense, because there's so much about the location in-game that sticks out to anyone Why does the rock have dialogue? RPGs. It makes you feel like they have to be telling you something with this. An off-colored rock at a space-themed location? An NPC even tells you that it's vaguely related to wishes. I think it's more shocking that Jirachi isn't related to the rock in some way. And so it's incredibly satisfying to actually swipe the physical card, head to Moss Deep, get some light dialogue about wishmaking, and then fighting it out with Jirachi in royal fashion. Talk about being surrounded by beauty, because this is it. The pinnacle of this project, in my opinion, and the extent of this magical creation is best captured in the cards for the Johto Beasts. Blissey went the extra mile with these ones. This, these are, I think to date, my most unhinged project was these three Pokemon. All three cards are part of an overarching story that you have to play in order to get the whole thing. And there's even a fourth bonus card thrown in to wrap up the story and hand out some extra rewards. These are miles beyond. It's actually not even a card in Ruby and Sapphire. A lot of people don't realize this. After you do Suicune in Ruby and Sapphire, you can just go to Yusin and get uh, get the, the thing. You don't even need to scan an extra card. I just couldn't, I couldn't fit it in Emerald. Just simple encounters. These stories rival, if not altogether, eclipse the Eon Tickets experience. Yusin from the Johto region wants Yo. your help as he tracks down Suicune and needs to find Entei and Raikou along the way. You'll have to solve braille puzzles, take down mighty foes, and enjoy references to Pokemon's extended lore as you go on a quest for the ages. And you can trust that those who succeed and make it to the fourth card will be rewarded handily. I'm resistant to say too much though, because I had such a good time playing them on stream for the first time. I really can't recommend these- That's me! That's Bless you, Jeff. Specific cards enough. They were able to uniquely cram NPC interactions and braille puzzles into these ones. And it's all contained in these four tiny code cards. And I got to experience them on my childhood cartridge. This whole project is truly a miracle to me. These cartridges, this generation, they were pushed to their absolute limit with these cards. New, but also unobtrusive content for games that came out so long ago. It's the absolute dream scenario for a fan of a retro game. So I implore you to check the cards out, try the events for yourself, get set up with an e-reader if you can find one, and hopefully rekindle some of that childhood whimsy. Because if you're looking for the way that these games made you feel when they first came out, then look no further, because here it is. It's one of the most important projects I've ever come across in this community. It's an ode to creation and preservation. And a part of me is still in disbelief. Super special thanks again to Blissey, obviously for That's creating me. these masterpieces, but also for sending me a set of cards and it's helping me out with them so I could experience firsthand this incredible work of art. You should absolutely check out their channel, watch their videos, 
If you're feeling hungry for any of the technical details on this, or really just on Pokemon things in general, you're gonna. This is like unrelated mostly. Hungry for any of the technical details on this? I think this thumbnail is fire, low key. But... Really just on Pokemon things in general, you're gonna love what they put out. All sorts of links are in the description. And thanks to you if you made it this far. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Perhaps a little bit different than what I usually do, but this was an extremely special case. Let me know your thoughts down below as always, and I'll see you all next time. Droomish out. That was an awesome video. I didn't expect it to be such a, uh, I, I don't know. I, this is a really good essay, I think. Not just because it's about my shit, but like, in fact, my, my favorite part of the video might even be Drumish's description of the e-reader and Southern Island and like the way that feels. Because this is like such like, um, and like the way, and like this part, like the way the events feel, I think like this type of thing, like, yes, obviously he's, he's, using this to set up the context in which why you know what made my events hit the spot right but like this is like such a like a i don't know his the the description here eon ticket um let me check something the description here like is just such like a perfect way to describe what um like how these events made me feel and like what uh, what makes them special and what made the young ticket special and stuff e-reader card will be able to visit this island home of the legendaries latios and latios for an exclusive chance at catching the member of the pair that doesn't natively appear yes i will link this here i will uh link this in the I'm going to ping this in my Discord later anyway. I want to do I want to do a nice comment. Uh I I want to do a nice comment on the video uh thanking him for doing the video and uh plug plug it later and stuff after stream I'm going to do like a I want to leave like a nice comment. I want to leave like a nice comment and then I want to do uh like a nice post to my Discord and my community uh post. I I'll probably do I'll, I'll probably do um I'll probably do a um post in my Discord today and a comment on this video today and then uh Sunday I will do a community post on YouTube. I'll I'll let this breathe on its own for a few days before I fill the ecosystem with it on YouTube itself, but I will I will do both. Uh Uh, but this is like, thank you very much for doing this, Drumish. It was more flattering than I deserved, and just generally a very good video essay, I would say. All right, we're back to this crap <laughs> after that very meaningful video. Um, we're actually going to uh, pivot really quickly to. I'm gonna. I have to do something. We'll get the game audio back for you guys. We're only 30 seconds left, so. Oh, hair's going back. Hair goes back so I can focus. Here we go. Uh, my events work on other language e-readers. If you're like, if you're using the Japanese one, I I did make Celebi and Jirachi exist for the Japanese games. I think they're the only ones that I did. I don't know why uh, flow timer's fucking up. All right, so here we go. So now we have to do a blink search.
3,000 should be okay. We don't need to extend Blink to last target. Here we go. Let's calculate. We got a seed. This might be too far. Did I overextend? I don't know how far I have. linked up. We're gonna be close. We have 675,000. We should have a decent lay- <laughs> Jesus Christ. Goodness gracious. No, it's because it's the other blink timer. So we're going to have this many advances left. I have to get the battle done quickly. All right. This should be our seed. I forgot to check. This shit's hittable from this seed. It's fine. So I have to do this many advances. It will be available from this seed. Let's reset up the blink tab. That's going to be our seed. Right? So we'll just do 800, one, two, three. We'll just do like, we'll do like 200. Swap this to artillery as it should be. And then once we're in artillery, we need to figure it out. I know we just watched it together, Zach. So what we're gonna need to do immediately after is once we find our thing, we're gonna need to copy the seed, put it there, and we'll see where it goes. All right. Japanese e-reader only works. The Japanese e-reader stuff will only work for Ruby and Sapphire. There is not going to be support for Emerald in Japanese. Uh, probably. All right, we're at the point where we have to just do it. I have to close both these timers as well. I might have taken too long there. I didn't I didn't mash the A. I forgot to I was just like stressed. I forgot to mash A.
I saw him blink there. Does he not blink on this screen at all? That's really funny. I saw a blink there. I swear to God. I'm not crazy. All right, here we go. We're going to have to find the seed now. I'm going to click start inputs. We have a seed. Paste the seed here. Paste the seed here. Are we really a hundred thousand away? Uh oh. It's gonna be a long wait, huh? Oops. do don't want to goob it where's Absol oops Yeah, whatever. I need to get this many advances in blink. Hello? Let's see. It's an hour timer. Well, we have an hour to kill, folks. I guess it's time for the Battle Factory. Do I have to re-ident when I do that, or do I just click stop and then click start timer again? Click the mute blinks button. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to do uh, Gen 4. All right, cool. Yeah, because it's probably keeping the auto sync better in the background than it is. All right, my DS out. 
What's up, Warrior? How you doing? Uh, I think the Gen 4 Frontier is significantly better. It functions properly. Right. Music time. What's going on, Riley? You came in just in time for the gaming wait. Posted an update to my cat in the Discord in the announcements channel. I didn't save because I lost anyway, so it doesn't matter. Oops, no, 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 not level. No. Bronzong, Bastiodon, Armaldo. Bronzong, Bastiodon, something else, I forgot. What's special, Lucario? That's pretty cool. Right, Powder? Are you modest? Yeah. Signal Beam, Air Cutter. I mean, you're not going to be very useful in... You're banned from my Discord? Well, then you should be banned here. Why are you banned from my Discord? I guess we'll just lead. Lead with Lucario. Probably do the wheezing, an actual physically defensive wheezing. This thing. Oh, fuck. It wasn't me. I don't know. Who, I don't know who this person is either. I mean, a double team user is never going to be bad to have, right? That's just the long and short of it. You asked for raids back in S Sword and Shield? I don't believe you. I guess we'll just go with Weezing, whatever, man. Dark Void just pasting my whole message from the Discord. Mm, that's not good. How are you slower? It trick roomed again. It must have, right? So it undid the trick room. At this stage, they mostly do random moves, so. Armaldo, my son? You know we're taking that Armaldo.
This is my favorite PBR song. All right, battle one. Agron, Togekiss, and Espeon. We'll go with this. We'll exchange it for the Armaldo. Forest Fear is easy win. Easy dub. Yeah, Sunny Shore Coliseum is just, just good. I don't even know. Are you Tinted Lens or are you uh, Speed Boost? Speed Boost. It's Rock Slide. I doubt Togekiss can kill me in one hit. Uh, I don't remember which. I think these moves. Are... Oh, Warsphere is 90, really? I thought uh, Flash Cannon was actually the same power. I guess it's supposed to be a signature move, right? Fuck, Sky Attack? That could KO me if this is a hustle. Lamau, hustle! Hustle Moment TM. On Gen 7's new blink method? What are you talking about? <clears throat> What's up, Rezzy Royd? How you doing? I've seen the stuff the Japanese players have been doing with blinks in that game, but it's like very niche. Like, you don't really need it. Unless there's something else specifically that's different. We got here Gold Duck, Raichu, and Bastiodon. Gold Duck, Raichu, Bastiodon. Sethath has been doing a lot of blink. I have no idea. I don't know anything about what specifically they're doing. I know it's used for like SOS stuff. I don't know what else is used for. Awesome, that MNL guy. Yeah, I mean, I imagine you can use it. I believe you can use it for timelining. Um, it's very niche cases. I'll maybe do a video on it eventually, but like no immediate plans. Mega Muck Vile Plume. Oops, I didn't mean to cancel, but whatever. We're on Battle 3 now. Poipoles shouldn't be that bad. Isn't Poipole only 3 NPCs? I've done many 3 NPC RNG minutes. Quad resist, buddy. 
That's gotta be tinted lens. Did that much? a lot. Lucario, you frail boy. Yeah, I mean, the only, the main thoughts I would have for when I would be utilizing Blink is that Type Null is probably one of them. Uh, Type Null, Partner Pikachu are the two that come to mind. Maybe for the starters, I don't know. If you're blinking in the overworld, you could definitely do it for the starters. But the problem with the starters is that the amount of Blinks change. Um, Wizcash, Sheptile, and Nectric. Um, right to Bob for that. Jigga Drain. Why is my MGBA open? Get out of here. Need to switch for this sludge bomb should be able to do I just didn't know if you were able to ident uh, at that point in the cutscene or not. So starter is probably starter and partner cap. Starter, partner cap, type null, probably the most, the three most practical and popular uses for it. You can also do SOS manips, which is like, I, it's cool. It just doesn't seem like it has a lot of practicality to me. Greyloom, Torterra, Whale Lord. Rayloom, Torterra, Whale Lord. Who do they have on the other team? We'll switch to Bileum, Bileplume for the Brayloom scenario. Not hating on it, by the way. It's just like not going to be a priority. I guess I could have gone to uh, Espeon for this as well, but I resist both of the stabs. Bileplume will take a rock slide better than Espeon will. Uh, I could sleep powder this and then ingrain. I might do that. Insane. The crazy part is he rock slided on the Lucario.
It's Combine Pass Espeon. And it's Sash Braille. Of fucking course it is. Lord. I don't remember the last either. We have to hope it does nothing to kill the Espeon. Please live. Alright, thanks Rodney. Well, or not too big a deal. So let's do the test here. Yeah, seems to resync nicely. So we'll probably do that when we get back to like, down to like five minutes or something like that. to battle seven now. Skarmory Crobat Muck. Skarmory Crobat Muck. I think we get rid of Vile Plume here for anything else. Uh, probably this. Lucario will actually be better than against Skarmory than you would think because of Aura Sphere. And Skarmory's uh, piss poor special defense. You know, Skarmory can bulk up special defense a decent amount when it has to. Um, but in these places, they're typically not done that way. something, isn't it? That yeah, had Fire Punch. Can't complain. Crowback could heck me over. I've got... Kind of bite. Some other flinching maneuver. Eh, flinching maneuver. Yeah. Uh, that's just how Crobat works in these places. It has an item that increases the chance of its flinching moves. Alright, nice. We're round two. Round two. Congratulations, JJM. Glad you enjoyed the Jirachi event. stops being bad and the AI throwing is also sort of a downer sometimes because you can't predict the switches it's a little bit annoying but I mean it's not just saved by bad AI they, they could have not flinched me with uh it's not even a 50% chance to flinch with air slash 
I don't think, uh, with the Razor Fang. So, Wizcash and Drapion. Wizcash, Drapion. Wizcash, Drapion. Special Torterra, not great. I really don't have anything for Drapion. This is a bad team. It's physical. I think we do these three. Should be good enough. and say thanks for the RNG vids. Thanks for watching them. Appreciate it. But a lot of thanks to your video. And that's in Pokemon Violet. Awesome. Can't believe that didn't KO. PBR soundtrack is quite an improvement from Kahlo and XD, I think. Doing a Jiga Drain again. Giga Drain also might even be 60 power in this game. Is it 60 or 65? It's pretty weak, I think. Yeah, it's 60. I don't really have anything to do to this. You can see the call timer. It's at 37 minutes. Oh, it's at the bottom of the screen. Well, I feel like I can move it up here if you want. We'll do a uh, indoor situation. This will be a very strong reversal. How is the reversal that weak still? It's facade, whatever. It's gotta be stronger then. Weavile and Exeggutor. Right, that means this guy's out. They're all pretty bad into Weavile, but I'll go with Drapion. The knockoff's really bad this gen too, so. <sighs> Excuse me. What's my item? Iron ball. Save that for, uh, save it for Exeggutor. Because Iron Ball Fling will, like, demolish that thing. Or whatever, you faint anyway. This Weavile would have been very evil if it had clicked double team on the first turn. Altaria, do I have an ice move?
Come on, live. Oh, you lived plenty. I mean, this should be 120 power, but... Slowbro is not exactly known for... Yeah, never mind. Ugh. I guess we'll just do this. I was gonna say, Slowbro is not exactly known for its high physical attack, but... Alright, thanks, I took a bite. Appreciate you. Oh, it's like my guy. He probably only has a grass move. It's probably got Gage Rain. It's probably just like the Torterra that I had. I think Avalanche is just go second, not take damage. I don't remember. Ooh, no, it looks like it was take damage. I forget how we re up on the move really quick. Yeah. Oh, Slubber took it out. We didn't even need to do that with Drabion. Gaspar. Get out of here, Gaspacho. Shuckle and Ursa Ring. It's two dark types, though. I go with this. Flying type, Earth Pig Mute. That's a good idea. Altari is kind of weak, but. And with Shuckle, I'll just lead with Fling, get it off right out of, right immediately. Switch his attack and defense. Isn't it just going to instantly die now? Okay, bye. Ah, uh, Rampardos, huh? So I can't switch here. Just go with poison jab. I know it's not very effective, but I'm not, what am I going to use payback or you know what I mean? It's got guts. That's not good at all. Well, Drabion's going down here. Guts and minus two? Are you kidding me? No way, dude. Alright, Ursa Ring. I will just click Perish Song. That's not good. That crit might actually fuck me. I got crit again. Oh my god, I just did that much. go for it. Whoa. Does Avalanche make me go second? It's got counter. Aquatel could to a KO. 
Do I live this? It went first. It should only be 60 non-stab. So he loses this turn anyway. This is quite scary. I could have lost if I didn't miss. Oh, Lord. Gliscord Ampharos. These Pokemon are bad. Mm, we'll get out of here. I think what we'll do is we'll go to um, Slubber immediately. We'll do an avalanche. Uh, not great news for me, I'll say that. Tiachi. No. Oh, Lord. This is like a danger zone. Um, I think I might have to sing it. All right, close score was faster than me, which is crazy. You can sleep for a very long time in this game though, so. Uh, is this the one that gives me a chance of a boost? Yeah, I'm gonna go for it. This should KO, and so I could get the Omni boost. Nope. I mean, this could have Power Gem, Thunderbolt. It's pretty bulky, Altaria's probably not gonna See if I can. Uh... Yeah, that's power jump. Well, so I was gonna say we'll see if I can sing it. That's two sings in one battle is kind of like. Uh... Yeah. Come on, keep doing it. Uh... It's bad news. It's to not thunderwave me. No. Uh, now I have to be faster than whatever's last. And be able to one hit KO it. Never one hit KOing a flare. Uh, poison just went. Maybe I can crit, get poison. Sad time. All right, I'm gonna get up and go for a little walk.
All right, I'm back. I took a minor break. All right. I'm just gonna put my hair back. We have 15 minutes. I could try another round, I guess. I'll just do it. Whatever. We'll just do it. This this methodology will be the same in English or Japanese, yeah. Let's see how the blinks are aligned. Oh my lord. My computer's mad about something. Hold on. Does everybody calm down for a bit? No, this is way out of sync, dude. This is way out of sync. I just started and stopped it, too. I think what I'm going to do is re-ident my blinks. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that's the only uh path to uh path forward personally. Go get rid of that. Let's get the... Oh, there is no game audio at this point, right? Because if I just go, like, down and up... It will do... Yeah, it will. Yeah, that's really funny. No game audio at this point, but that's just how it be. I want that timer to be synchroed, baby. Yeah, I figured that was a bad one. A lot of double blinks. Fuck, my eyes were twitching. <laughs> Dude, I hate getting double blinks like this. This is pissing me off. How? What? Hmm. 
This doesn't even make any sense. Oh, it's because... All right, I'm a fool. I know what the problem was. All right. We have this many. Open timer. Should be much more synchronized. I think it, like, became desynced over time and there was nothing you could do about it. Yeah. Now we only have 10 minutes, so we did not miss it. What happened was I think that I think an hour was very long and I don't know if it's the programmer or just my computer is you know not good enough to multitask like that. The it became like permanently out of sync. So, what I might do when we get to, like, five minutes is resync again fully. Is maybe what I'll do. I'll maybe resync fully when we get that close. Out of paranoia. I don't think anything is messed up. The, the I mean, You can see how beautiful the synchronization is right now. Look at that. Beautiful. Perfect. We just have 10 minutes. It's not worth doing anything else to, in 10 minutes, you know? I think my computer is just using a lot of RAM. It's mad. So we just have a, just a cool 10 minute wait vibe out. Yeah, exactly. Better to be paranoid than waste an hour. We're very close. For a one sixtieth of a second input.
All right. Oh, I've been sitting bad. Oh, my back hurts so much. I guess we'll reassess around three minutes. Under five minutes remain. We're at about three minutes left. Let's uh, let's resync just for. Let's resync, and I'm gonna close some tabs on my computer. To make sure I'm not over consuming. Okay. Yeah, that's the best plan here. I'm just gonna stop, delete that, find seed again, stop inputs. Let's just go for it. You know what I mean. I hit three by right. That's our new seed. 4,000 advances away. Um, calculate, open timer. All right, we should be close enough. We are very close. Whoa, is wrong? It's wrong, incorrect. No, 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 this is so bad. Because now I don't have my original seed anymore. I, uh...
This is bad. This is bad. I've like never gotten the incorrect blink like that. We're getting close, we're getting close. Holy shit. I don't even know what happened. Oh, I think I fucked it up really bad. That's sad. I think I just like fully choked and lost my positioning. Sad. It's a male Absol. I'm sad. Hopefully I wasn't too far off. Can't believe I fucked that up at the end. What a Omega choke. <sighs> I don't even know if this is the right seed. Like that's, I don't even know if this is what my, like hopefully the choking didn't matter and I realigned myself. I should have just left it. But I got so paranoid at how severe the desync was. You know what I mean? That I was nervous about it. I was 90 advances late, which probably means I was not even on the correct blink at the end. I probably over did the blink. So sad. All right, well, that's it for today. I don't know if I'm streaming tomorrow or anything.